In this video we'll be doing a review of Nakamoto Games, yes perhaps a bit of an obscure one if you're an advent viewer of this channel, but trust me this is one you're going to want to know of sooner rather than later. Which of course if you're a newer viewer who ended up on this video because we're talking about Naka, first of all welcome we're glad to have you here. Our goal is to cover every crypto project before the bull market, and so far we've covered projects I think will be pretty huge like Veracity Render Akash and others. Naka will now also be joining that list, and of course there's still many many more to go so make sure to subscribe for that. But you're already probably well aware of what Naka is and the potential it has going into the next cycle. So let's get right into it, and see if this thing can truly 50 to 100x. Nakamoto Games what is it? Well as you can tell by the name it's obviously a crypto project that is well entrenched within the Web3 gaming niche, which we've definitively claimed multiple times by now will be the most bullish sector in the entire crypto landscape. And so if that is the case, our job is to then determine which projects will be the vessels to receive all this bullishness and liquidity once gaming takes off. And considering how the options were already limited with Gala Games also now blowing up the way it has and likely being out the race, there's not too many projects left to choose from. And furthermore when we consider how small of a market cap Naka is, and just the amount of hype and interest it's starting to catch in the crypto Twitter and YouTube space, Nakamoto Games finds itself in a very peculiar position to say the least. Naka, developed by Chawalet Ruxusri on the Polygon blockchain is an entire gaming ecosystem mostly based on the premise of of play to earn. Now before you get turned off by play to earn as trust me I'm well aware of the concerns you have when you hear that. Let's first just expand on Naka a bit more and what they have to offer. So Nakamoto Games sees itself as the blockchain gaming version of the App Store or Google Play Store, where their main critique of the other current play to earn and blockchain games is that they're too fragmented in things like their gaming options, their tech stacks, and the blockchains that they use, resulting in a poor gamer experience as remember the goal of Web3 gaming isn't to just make money, but provide a genuine gaming experience where the user doesn't even realize blockchain or crypto are involved. But with how things currently are, it's way too complicated for us, let alone an average non-crypto gamer who can otherwise go on the App Store or Steam or the Xbox Game Store and play one of thousands of options with no barriers in the way. And Nakamoto Games is trying to do exactly that, kill all barriers and be that hub with a multitude of options for gamers to play. A one-stop shop for cutting-edge play to earn crypto gaming options is what they call it. And so within the gaming niche we often have the dialogue about whether it's better to invest in individual games like a Minds of Delarnia for example, or within gaming infrastructure that'll fuel the gaming niche. The idea is if you're an aggressive investor looking to hit it big then you'd pick the individual games hoping to luck out, but if you're the safer smarter investor you pick the infrastructure plays. Well Nakamoto Games it's unique in this regard because it's a bit of both, where the platform hosts an abundance of games, yet they're the ones releasing them all wear the Naka token. The thing you'd be investing in if you want to catch upside on this thing will get exposure to every single game as it's the token running the entire show. Of course the caveat would be that Nakamoto games aren't exactly releasing the highest quality games at least not yet like in Olivium, so it'd be unlikely for them to spark the gaming bull run. But the games they offer are still decent, and stay tuned because we'll be getting into some game play of them in a second. What I also really like about Nakamoto Games is the connections they have in the southeast and broader eastern markets. An extremely important hallmark as I shouldn't really have to emphasize how important the east is when it comes to gaming. And this feat is not actually one many other gaming projects can claim. The only other main one that comes to mind is Axie Infinity, which a lot of people speculate was the reason Axie popped off so much due to the amount of users it occurred from the regions like the Philippines Philippines for example even to this day. And similarly the chief marketer for Naka, the lead developer, and a couple important blockchain developers and advisors all have strong footholds in Thailand actually, which they claim gives them an advantage in once again appealing to that eastern market. Also a big part of their mission is to expand into China itself where they're said to be spending a lot of time and resources into marketing for the Chinese markets, as they implore the importance of being the first mover in this market, where they've applied for a crypto license in Hong Kong as a first step which they're confident will be approved. Remember these Asian markets yearn for play-to-earn games as it provides them additional income which can go an extremely long way in some of the less developed countries. By now we understand what Naka is what they want who they are. These steps are usually achieved by most crypto entities. So have they gone that step beyond to differentiate themselves which can obviously only be done by shipping product. Let's dive into it to find out. If you go on the Nakamoto Games web app, as of right now they have over 200 games 
games you can play with more on the way. These games vastly vary between what they call casual games to AAA, where they can be categorized into play to earn, free to play, story mode, and arcade. And if you think that's impressive, just remember that the beta testers for their first game Duck Hunter occurred in just October 2021. Meaning in less than two years Nakamoto Games has been able to deliver all this product. Which looking at the charts we can start to make sense out of how and why exactly the Naka token performed the way it has over the years. Where in October 2021 the project launches and instantly gets to highs of $7 which in general makes sense given that they launched in the bull run. And that too around the time of the gaming hype with meta and all that. Quickly though after the initial hype people realized Naka at that time had little to offer and so it absolutely dies in the bear market accumulating at 6 cents for the whole of 2022, where at the same time they didn't waver they were building the entire time. And all it was going to take was a small pump for people to notice that wait a minute this Nakamoto Games thing has actually built up a decent stockpile. And since the beginning of this year has been making convincing higher highs and higher lows and seems is just starting to get attention in the mainstream side. We'll get more into tokenomics and my investing plan and where I think Naka in terms of price can go. But let's first just cut to the chase. Are the games they distribute actually good? And this is obviously a bit more opinion based so take this with a grain of salt. But I'd say the games are fairly decent. They're not all exactly the best. So please do not get me wrong this is not a promotional video whatsoever. For example with the gameplay here of Cycle Stunts we can see it definitely seems like there's something a bit off. I'm not exactly looking for Rockstar level games comparing it to Red Dead Redemption 2 or anything. But these simple crypto games actually tend to look like this. A bit buggy and broken. But as long as they keep working toward improving that's all that matters. Archery Siege which is one of my favorite looks a little better higher quality. Brawler Master is also interesting almost giving me this 90s arcade type of feel. But then we got something like a Naka Strike which yes is a bit of a counter strike rip off but still it looks pretty good. Goal Rush can also get pretty hectic at times. Move it. Get out of his way. Boom. Nice try. Move it. Get out of his way. Fun Wheels is also interesting. The point being yes we're not yet producing these wicked mass adoption type games, but as mentioned earlier Nakamoto Games is slowly but surely growing. And I love representing this idea with this chart here, where the beginning stages are a slow grind. But the more they keep at it there will come that inflection point where eventually some sort of breakthrough occurs and all of a sudden things go parabolic from there. Other gaming studios like again Agala Games which are much further ahead on things like market cap and network effects, I would say are actually not that much ahead as far as the product they offer. Furthermore they've obviously taken quite a leg back recently as well. One I'd say is possible for them to completely die from but we'll leave that for a separate discussion. The point here is Naka as far as what they offer is ahead of their market cap, in other words undervalued. So can we see a mean reversion soon? Is that what's happening right now? Well given the fact that Naka along with Vulcan Forge was one of the few projects to pump relatively hard as Gala Games dumped with their whole controversy, it seems to me that attributes of fair value pricing is finally coming toward the direction of Naka. And so if that all is the case, what can we project going forward? 
if Nakamoto games continue delivering the way they have with some pretty ambitious things coming up on their roadmap like the Nakaverse 2.0, where you can purchase Naka Punk NFTs that'll serve as the passport for your 3D persona into what they call will be a groundbreaking metaverse, hosting an array of things like a poker experience called Cyber Poker 2099, as well as the use of artificial intelligence in this metaverse, as well as the Naka mobile app which will release this year Q4 to perhaps Q1 next year which will host 35 games. And we all know how important it is to be tapped into the mobile gaming side as that's where most gamers are. How they've collaborated with Meta to bring their Strike Force first-person shooter to the Facebook Gaming Center an attempted move into China, a Telegram game bought where all things Naka can be experienced through Telegram. The point is with all this on the way, and I personally don't see a lot of crypto gaming projects trying to achieve all this in the near future. And with Nakamoto Games sitting at just a $30 million market cap, and how one of its biggest competitors just shot themselves in the foot, and how experienced people in the space whom many of which I know personally are just hoping for a big pullback to get into this thing. Yes, let's just say Naka has some huge potential. I'd go as far as to say 100x potential from its bear market low of 6 cents. And who knows if Gala got to a $5 billion market cap at its peak last cycle Naka may even 100x from now but don't quote me on that. As far as my personal plan, Nakamoto Games will be a part of my bear market investment portfolio. I'm thinking at the very least a 2% entry. So far I've allocated 0.5% at around the 16 cent range. I'm waiting for a sharper pullback from here which we honestly may not even get. Usually I find that if you really want a project sometimes it's best to just get a little bit of an entry in. Since I have that entry I personally am remaining patient. I'll too wait for pullbacks if we get any. But if this thing continues trending up I won't mind putting bids in a bit higher. If you enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe as we'll continue pumping out these important crypto review and knowledge videos videos to get you well prepared before the next bull market. To buy or trade Nakamoto games or any other cryptocurrency then sign up to an exchange link below as it really helps support the content. Thank you for making it all the way to the end and you'll catch me in a bit.